I would say we should look at home as our primary training ground. Today on the show, we sit down with Alan Anderson, leadership coach and partner at the Shondell Group. Alan has dedicated his life to helping individuals and teams learn how to transform and thrive. We discuss the key ingredient in getting engaged, empowered, and equipped to navigate how to get from where you're at to where you want to be. This is The Career Cue, the podcast focused on helping you navigate the signals in your career to keep you growing and moving forward in business and in life. Here's today's host, Stacey Harris. So, Alan, thank you so much for coming on The Career Cue today. It's so great to have you here. My pleasure. Yeah. So, before we actually get into the kind of core of our conversation, I always love hearing the professional story of our guests and how they kind of got to the chair, you know, mm-hmm. on the other side of the table here in the studio. I loved your story. So, do you mind kind of just sharing a little bit about how you got to where you are today? Totally. Yeah. Lots of bumps and bruises. <laughs> and... I'll give a brief overview of it, and we're going to go way back to early 1900s. (laughs) My dad's grandparents came to Seattle from Norway. Mm. And so that had implications that I learned about a little bit later on. Specifically, my father said, Alan, you're an Anderson S-E-N. Very important. And he Mm. said, that means you work hard, firm handshake, and you drink black coffee. (laughs) That is all. So we laugh. Two things. (laughs) But actually, that was... A lot of my experience growing up of that, those tenets of this is what it meant to be a human that is a positive contribution to society. So in that space, what I learned was you need to work hard. And in truth, we didn't know this until earlier on or later on, growing up, I had ADHD. Only it wasn't diagnosed as that right. when I was a kid. It was called repeat a grade, which I also did. <laughs> So so as you can tell, I was set up for a win in life, right? And so this great developed work ethic paired with an inability to focus. And so as I started to grow, the thing I needed to become more proficient in is asking questions, which I started doing because I needed help. I needed to work through those things. I repeated a grade once, didn't want to do it again. But what I found as I got into my professional career, uh, I only had one regular just job. The rest of my vocational opportunities were actually all careers. And I didn't realize that's what was happening. And so it was by the end of my late 20s that I started to realize I'd had a few years in the public sector, a few years in the uh, nonprofit world. And <clears throat> the, the common denominator was that I was living very reactive. Mm. And so because I worked hard, opportunity provided itself. And I thought, oh, this must be good. This is a career. I can support my family with this. And what I was not aware of is when you live reactive, you're never actually able to follow your your purpose and your values or your vision or your mission as clearly as if you were living more proactive. Mm -hmm. And so we can sum up my story with this. Uh, And I will share this with clients now regularly, that next to faith and family, the best things that ever happened to me were foreclosure on our first home and being fired from what I thought was a dream job because it was the catalyst for causing me to pause and realize, wait a minute, something's off here. And so with those moments, those two significant points in your life, those are the moments when you discovered that you had to almost be the leadership of you or the Mm -hmm. leader of you. Yeah, Yeah. that's exactly right. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of walking us through like one or both of those processes and how you come out of that with such a positive kind of, oh my gosh, this is what I'm supposed to do, (laughs) right? Because um, for a lot of people, those could be two, just one of those events could be super Mm -hmm. paralyzing emotionally, Mm -hmm. mentally, and possibly even physically, because the emotional stress can, you know, manifest itself in a physical way. But how do you do that? How do you yeah. take that and and turn it into such an, a positively impactful, not only for you and your family, but now for your clients as well? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, would love to share both because they're, they're intertwined much like life in yes. general, right? <laughs> the first was this late 20s or so uh, when I was in the nonprofit world, I actually had our now founder and CEO of the firm I'm a partner in, Shondell, come in and do a training day with our organization. Professionally, I had about 100 people under me that I was leading, so I had manpower and we should be effective and efficient in getting all these things done. And then personally, I'd been married for just about five years. And if I'm honest, in both my personal and professional state, things were clunky and difficult, 
professionally, we weren't getting as much done as we should have. People didn't feel cared for. They weren't engaged and motivated. Uh, personally, my wife and I were not communicating well, and I did what every great husband does. I blamed her. And so <laughs> as you can tell, at that time, I was my head was not necessarily on properly. And so Shondell had come in, done a training day. We, we did uh, a self-assessment measuring one's behaviors and motivations. Then we started talking through what does it look like to engage and motivate people well. That was a defining day in my life because it was at the precipice of these hardships I was about to go through that I didn't know. Mm. As we know, uh, 2008, we had, toward the end of that year, we had a, a recession. And so about a year and some change later, I was about to be laid off from what I thought was a great job, which ultimately resulted in foreclosure because we had a kid in that time frame. And so uh, my wife had actually also had some health issues, so she can not work full-time. So 2008 happens. Thankfully, I got this great training day with Shondell, helped me realize personally and professionally, I was actually the common denominator. I was the issue. Hmm. In that space, what ensued was uh, laid off about uh, yeah, 15 to 16 months later because of the recession. Wife got pregnant, decided uh, she would quit her great job at Nordstrom that she loved to come home because she couldn't work full time with a kiddo. And then I started uh, working, got into the private sector and uh, started realizing that I needed to engage and motivate people. Mm. So I started to learn that great thing. So fast forward a few years and I started to see a little bit that transition from reactive to proactive started to take shape. I started to see the thing I love is coaching people because a coach is a little bit different than a consultant. I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. I had tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> I need to come in and I need to ask you great questions yeah. and figure out how can we collaborate and do it together. So couple years into that experience of seeing what I enjoyed doing, decided I'm going to go try and get a job in the professional training and development industry, found a consulting firm that was hiring, went through interviews, out-interviewed people with industrial organizational psychology degrees because I was just honest with them. Uh, one of the, the tenets I love is Patrick Lincioni's uh, take on humble, hungry, honest, and smart. So I've, I've tried to adopt that. And shared that with them and said, hey, I think I know what I know, and I think I know what I don't know, and I think I know the difference. So if you can train me, I'm going to be a great fit. And they said, we can train you. <laughs> Only to a month or so later say, you know what? We can't train you the way we thought we could, so we're going to fire you. And that was the moment where we had just gotten on our feet from the foreclosure. We had baby number two on the way. So what I had learned now, three to four years previously, was finally starting to bear fruit in my life where I realized, okay, I'm the common denominator. I can't lead others well unless I'm leading myself well. And now with being laid off in a foreclosure and then a few years later, now being fired, which I thought was going to be the end of my life, I realized that those were learning opportunities. Mm. If I paused and I looked back and said, okay, what can I learn from those? Then the outcome of that really started to help me realize, oh, I've been living reactively, not proactively. I've not been a great, healthy leader of myself. I have been trying to get everybody else to do things, but I, I have to start with mm. me. And so that was the time and place where I really, I paused and with uh, my wife and just thinking through family, we really clarified what are our, what's our purpose. So Anderson family, what's our purpose? values, vision, mission. And then in that space, as time went on, Shondell was so monumental in my life in 2009, we actually had kept in touch. And when she needed someone here to help with the Seattle office and, and the opportunity came, and thankfully I'd been employing for, uh, for a number of years what it looked like to lead myself mm -hmm. well, to, to have healthy, to practice healthy mm -hmm. leadership. So you were practicing, you were living it. You are living it, and therefore you to to prove and to show and to practice that you're you're effective in leading yourself. That allows you then to go ahead and lead others. Yeah, yeah. and that ultimately is is the reason why we're talking today, right? Is because yes. <laughs> I got to tell you, Alan, the tenacity that you have to go back to back on so many hard, you know, even if you feel like you've fallen down on one knee, what it takes to actually get back up. Because we all want to get back up, but sometimes we we feel like, you know, well, are we afraid to get back up? Or, um, you know, what's going to happen if we try and get back up? Can I get back up? But it sounds like 
the impact that that training had on you and for your organization at the time. Mm-hmm. It was just, you know, yes. there's a great training development opportunity, but it truly was a pivotal point in mm-hmm. your personal and professional life, right? Yeah. And it may have actually taken a few years for you to actually start implementing that, but ultimately it's come full circle, yeah. right? And for yeah. you to now be consulting and a part of the Shondell Group team is mm-hmm. is... It's important for you to be able to work with clients that know that you're living the mission of what it means. That's great. So let's break down what it means to lead yourself. Like for the folks that are, yeah, no, Alan, that sounds great. I'm a great leader of myself. Like what are the things that people need to start thinking about in order to truly become the leader of themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. I believe the first element is remembering that this is a daily practice. So we there's a lot of information out there that if we looked at a life, really it's just a series of habits, right? And so what we have to remember is this is not a one-time thing. And so as we look at leadership, I want to actually just ask you a quick question, if I may. Can, can we break the rules? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> We're going to shake it up a little here. When you think of leadership or leader or even the word lead, what comes to mind? If I think about, and I'll, I'll take it from the perspective of the people who I deem to be great leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a particular former manager in mind, and I always joked that I would follow her anywhere in the world. In actual fact, I did. Mm. (laughs) I went and worked for her in India for six months. And the reasons why is because she inspired me. She supported me. She believed in me even on the days that I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And she was someone that lived a life, both professionally and personally, that I admired. And while I didn't want to be her, there were so many characteristics of her and her values Mm -hmm. that I wanted to be around. I wanted to be a better person because I had her in my life. And I would love to work for her again, but even if I never work for her again... She's definitely a leader in job title in, Mm -hmm. you know, in the company that she's at. She continues to do an amazing job. But even in retirement, I will still call her a fantastic leader because she embodied so much of what I admired about someone that can gather the people and identify their strengths and to be able to assist in in bridging the gaps on their areas of perhaps weakness. Yeah, absolutely. And as we're talking about leadership – I'm sure even our listeners now, if they were to bring to to mind somebody, they would bring someone to mind that is a lot like your manager. Yes. Right? Nina <clears throat> Johal. I'm just going to say it Let's out loud. Let's give her a shout out. <laughs> I'm actually going to have to email her and let her know that I've mentioned her. Absolutely. But, um, and the great thing about Nina is that I'm thankful to have actually continued relationships with people who have also worked for her. And she'll often always land in the top two managers of those That's people's amazing careers, you know, and to have even one person in your life that um, has su- had such a an incredible leadership impact for you, yeah. I think is is wonderful. And I think we feel very fortunate yeah, to have absolutely. been a part of that. Yeah. And, and that's the very thing that I'm hoping that we can tease out societally is that if we had more Ninas, mm. right? Mm. And that's just imagine what this world would mm. be like, especially now that we're on a global, uh, you know, in a, a newer term, global, right? We can think locally and, and exist globally. If we had more people like that, we need more Ninas. Where do we start with that? Because while Nina sounds phenomenal, I don't know where to start. How do I become a Nina? And I think that's what my journey has helped me I kiddingly say this, but I'm I'm being serious. I want to have paid the dumb tax for everybody <laughs> listening. Okay, I, I want to have had to go through the foreclosures or mm-hmm. the firings or mm-hmm. those things, so that you don't have to. Right. And the way we do that is we learn not just learning alone, but now that we can apply. And I mm-hmm. think that's my premise here: is that I love how Derek Seaver says. If information were only the issue, we'd all be billionaires with six-pack abs, <laughs> right? It's it's information and action. Mm. And so I think that's my premise is that a healthy leader, when you're leading yourself, you, you, can, you can lead yourself and be a healthy leader. As you're taking this information, you're learning, and then you're applying it to action. Mm. And so for Nina, how do I get to be like her? How do I get to be like a healthy leader? I need to know where to start. Mm. And that's the journey that I have 
had to take the long route. Maybe it's the scenic route at times. <laughs> I would love to make that an accelerated course. And, and I'll, mm. I'll give a plug for Shondell. My, my shout out, top two for me for sure uh, in terms of leaders. Uh, while our founder's name is Shondell, her father was a pilot and he named her Shondell for a purpose. A Shondell is actually a French aviation term for the quickest way to get to the next altitude while changing directions. It's a flight maneuver. Wow. And so I think that's part of the impact. When I met her in 2000, I was like, oh, my God, I want to get to the next level. <laughs> but where do I start? While changing direction. While changing yeah. directions. And oh. so what it, what it implies is what, <laughs> what I would love to do is say, okay, Stacy, we're going to plan a three-month vacation to where we can go away and we're going to think and we're going to pro- – we can't do that. No, it's can't not realistic. Yeah. So for us, how do we get to the next altitude while changing directions in our personal, in our professional life? And that pursuit, I believe the cornerstone of it is healthy leadership. If I'm a healthy leader, now we just need to think, okay, where do we start and what does that process look like? Now that we're, we're looking at Nina as our point of reference, how do we then – Make that applicable to you, to me. How do we start now? And so for our listeners that are out there that perhaps are what we call individual contributors, yep, right? Absolutely. Because when you hear the term leader, you assume that you are a leader of an organization, whether it be a small team of two people or 200 or 2,000, right? You don't have to be a CEO or a VP of a Fortune 100 company. So – The concept of thinking about being a leader as an individual, right, being a leader of yourself, but also how can you be a leader in your network, in your community, um, I think can be somewhat overwhelming for some people to think through. So just even starting with how to think of yourself as a leader, right, that can be kind of overwhelming in and of itself. So as folks are walking the dog today or, or commuting on the way to work, thinking about how they can be a better leader of themselves and of others, what's the first thing that they should start thinking about? I love that question. It's a very important question. Unfortunately, we don't ask it enough. I believe it starts with a fundamental reality. And it, this reality has gotten forgotten, especially in this current day and age, especially in our society. And that reality is this. If someone has a title of CEO or VP or fill in the blank, Mm -hmm. that is actually a byproduct. That is not the starting point. And so if I shared with you my next meeting after this is with a GM of the Four Seasons, our brain automatically, because of our society, starts thinking, oh, man, Alan, he really does work with executives. If I were to say my next meeting is with a garbage man and we're going to talk through, our brain automatically assigns a little bit less of a value. That ought not be so. Mm -hmm. We are each uniquely wired. We are each uniquely special. And in that space, we need both. You need the CEO and you need uh, the general manager and you need the garbage man. So we have to first start with an assumption that everyone is equal in dignity, value, and worth. And I know that may sound rudimentary and that may sound very simple, but we have forgotten that because, I, and I have to do this as well, I in the daily practice I alluded to earlier, I have to make sure that I reset my brain every day mm. so that I can look at you and I can look at the next person and the next person and the person who cuts me off when I'm driving with the same equal dignity, value, and worth. And I don't do a great job of that. (laughs) I'm just going to tell myself right now. It's a daily practice, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Exactly right. So I think in that space, then once I realize, let me stop putting value on titles Mm. and things that we we put a value on a car. I mean, parenthetical statement here real quick. A hundred years ago, you had a car. Okay, great. That's, That's great, right? Like somebody could have oogled and ogled over that totally makes sense. You had money. No such thing as credit. Now you have a car. You could have just gotten funding for that Bugatti or that 150,000 Tesla. It means a lot less. And yet we still ascribe value to, you know, what do I drive or what Mm -hmm. house do I live in those things. And thankfully, I just, I had to learn that. I had to unlearn that by going the hard route. Mm -hmm. And I think now that plays into, as we're working with leaders to help them get to the next level, I think the starting point is first and foremost, Everybody equal dignity, value, and worth. Let's stop putting so much value in titles. Let's look at them like a human. Mm -hmm. Let me stop objectifying them, whether positively or negatively. I think then the second step in that is I need to know who I am, how I'm wired, what is my strength, what is my weakness. And so much of the time, 
I'm so concerned with whatever circumstance I'm going into, what am I going to get out of it? So let's just look at this in terms of the career. I look at a potential job opportunity, or at least this is what I used to do. <laughs> potential job opportunity. First question, what's compensation? How am I going to get paid here? And, and then I start to look through like roles and responsibility. Yeah, you know what? I could do that role and responsibility. So we've gotten the cart before the horse, so to speak. And I, so I think the very next step, so let's pause. Let's just, who are you? What's your wiring? Do you know how you best communicate? Do you know how you best learn in those things? And I think if we can start on that path, then so many other things open up because we'll start to see opportunities that then align with us. And that's really, you know, the buzzword in consulting and coaching is, is alignment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great word. Let's make sure that we don't say it without meaning it. But the opportunities that I have flourished and th- thrived in is because I've been in aligned. Mm-hmm. And I, I realized that the the expectation was in alignment with what I could offer, my capacity, versus the expectation was off base. Mm-hmm. And so let's pause and let's realize, okay, value in everyone how am I wired? What does that look like? And then we start to figure out, okay, where am I aligned with these opportunities? And let's not just take something because it offers something we think we need. Right. Oh, gosh, I'm going to have an interesting drive home today. <laughs> you got you got me thinking about a lot of things, Alan. So sometimes it's it's easier for us to look at someone else, like, you know, and assign a value to them. And it's harder for us to assign a value to ourselves. Yes. Is it possible to to start with family, right? You had mentioned that mm-hmm. going to that training offered by Chandel Group years ago um, offered you an opportunity because you took a look at your personal and mm-hmm. professional life and you w- needed to understand what your mission was, what your mm-hmm. values were. So being a leader isn't exclusive to your professional life. It is in your personal life too, whether – you you know have family or your network or your community that you that you live within. So they're possibly. I think it's important to be able to understand the leadership of you. It's seamless, right? Because yeah. it's not a oh I'm a leader at work, but I'm not at home. Yes. No, you are. Right? Yes. And so, um, you know, could there be an opportunity for you to just even start at home, right? To be able to understand what those values are, and and um, perhaps if. A leader, leader within yourself and and at home, each individual, because a family of four or five or however mm-hmm. big your household is, um, everyone has an opportunity to be a leader in their own capacity and in their own right, you know, whether it's um, a strength that one person yes. has over another. Um, and to be able to even start that exercise at home might be valuable for you to be able to understand how then you can take it into your professional life as well. Yeah, That's you great. you are so good at framing questions. Oh. <laughs> You're as good as you appeared. Uh-huh. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I say that because I want to take that statement. I want to up the ante. Not only would it be valuable, I believe it's imperative. Hmm. And this is why. If you really want to be a healthy leader, yeah. we have the opportunity to lead others, especially in our family, who know us the best, who know our flaws, who knew, knew all those things. Thankfully, people can't see this, see us today. <laughs> when I proposed to my wife, I used to have phenomenal hair. <laughs> and now, as you can tell, I'm the bald guy with wood glasses, right? <laughs> These people at home in our family, they know us the best. And so what I'm about to share should be taken as encouragement for us. It's never too late. If you can hear this, you have opportunity to go and take action. <clears throat> but I have a number of clients who have shared that, well, I can't lead at home because I'm divorced or my kids are in college or those things. So what I'm about to share is it's never too late to start a conversation. I would say we should look at home as our primary training ground. Internally within Shondell Group, we we have as an internal statement that if someone works for Shondell Group, we want their family to say this person was a better person because they were employed mm-hmm. by Shondell Group. Now, Let's look at the other side of that. That is tremendously hard. H- how do I do that to someone who already knows all of my flaws? So now let's really up the ante and say, so I have a six-year-old daughter, three-year-old son, and then our third and final child <laughs> is due in a few weeks. And these kiddos are my primary training ground to practice my healthy leadership. It blows my mind when my three-year-old will do something that I just, it's like, oh my gosh, that he got that from me. So- 
if we really want to start practicing healthy leadership, home is the best place because that will be the hardest training ground. It's, it's much more difficult. And yet, if you start to exercise that muscle of healthy leadership at home, boy, there's not anybody that you can't yeah. lead well. I love that. That's great, Alan. And I, I love the fact that this is, this is stuff that people can actually go home tonight and actually start mm-hmm. thinking about and taking – Taking into action, yes. like how on your drive home from work tonight, um, start thinking about how you can show up as a healthier leader um, at home because it really does start at home, yes. right? And once we once we get a handle on everything at home, it, it gives us the strength to be able to go out and, and um, out into the world and handle everything that comes at us out there. So we're actually going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I actually want to get into – kind of how you understand how healthy you are to kind of get to that starting point. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back in a minute. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out the show notes at thecareerq.com where you can also subscribe to the podcast and sign up for our newsletter. Welcome back to The Career Q. Today, we're talking with Alan Anderson of the Shandell Group. And uh, before the break, we were talking to Alan about his uh, personal professional story, um, which is fascinating and one that actually, um, you know, the speed bumps that he hit in his life, um, you know, really led him to uh, the the passion that he has today of helping his clients understand um how to become the leadership uh, for themselves as as well as being able to turn up as a healthy leader uh, for the people around them. So let's actually talk about understanding how healthy you are as a leader. Again, whether you're an individual contributor or you've got some big fancy schmancy title mm-hmm. or as a leader at home, like how do you understand where you are right now? That's a really great question. Let's paint a quick picture Imagine, if you would, for a moment, an apple tree. And this apple tree actually has apples that you would want to eat. <laughs> I'm learning the value of eating healthy. Right? <laughs> in, this, in this beautiful apple tree, bright, shiny, crispy red apples, what did it take to produce that fruit? So let's pause for a moment and let's look at the elements of that. And really there's three, and we're going to oversimplify this here, but there's three primary elements. The first element is you need great soil. It's got to be nutrient-rich. There's got to be space for roots to take root. So is the soil in the right condition? Then the next element is actually the root system. Are these roots growing deep, and are they able to go deep and wide? Then once that's established, then we get this beautiful tree that actually is going to produce beautiful apples that are taste good and are healthy for you. And so that simple picture is much like a self-assessment that we have to diagnose, am I a healthy leader? So there's actually three elements of healthy leadership that we can pause and just work through to see where am I at? Why do we have that? Because the worst thing you could do is start putting time and energy and effort into the wrong thing and go the wrong direction. And realize that your soil is full of something you don't want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So the first element, similar to the soil, is what we would call the engaged stage. Are you aware of your wiring? Are you aware of your surroundings? Or do you have a high level of Mm self-awareness? Then the next ingredient is accountability. Am I going to take personal accountability for my life? It's hard to blame a foreclosure on other people. It's hard to blame being fired on other people. But then the next ingredient is I'm going to take action. So in this engaged stage, assess where's my self-awareness, where's my personal accountability, and where's my action level. That then moves moves us into the root stage or or the second element, and that looks at the empowerment stage. So similar to roots taking and growing deep and wide, I want to ask, where's my character? What's my character like here? Then I want to look down and see, what's my competency? What are the areas I need to grow? What are the skills necessary for me to do what I love to do or want to do? And then what's my capacity? Do I have the the capability right now to get out and do those things? So once I've assessed the first element and then the second element, really the third element is similar to that tree where 
Now we're in the execution stage. So what's my mindset? Do I have a growth mindset here or is it fixed? Mm. And once I'm, I'm looking at my mindset, then I need to look at my motivation. Why the heck am I doing this? Why am I putting in this time and energy and effort? And then finally, what's my method? And this is just very practical. Is there the right method? Am I doing the wrong thing or the right thing or those things? So by the time that we work through that progression of those different elements, and we need to look all of them, and as part of that daily practice, then somebody who who's working and focusing on those, much like a tree will produce great fruit in, a, in my life, then I start to get fruit. Like I get to buy in and be a partner of Shondell Group, or I get to be a CEO, or I get to go buy the house I've always wanted to, or those things. So instead of doing what is more socially a norm currently and saying, I want that thing, give it to me, or I'm going to go finance it, or I'm just going to go do it, we're actually starting in the right order, and that allows us to be healthy. And the reason, and this is my primary purpose in all this, the reason I want you to be healthy is because you will pass the test of time. That's what I care about. I love doing team trainings when we'll take leadership teams through. And I read through this list of values of this organization, trust and transparency, honesty, and then only to reveal it's Enron, who doesn't exist anymore, (laughs) right? And so let's get the right order with the right focus and do the right thing. And most of the time, much like myself, I simply didn't know what that was. Mm. So this self-assessment allows me to know, okay, am I in the engagement? Do I need to get more engaged mm-hmm. or is it more I'm, I need to be more empowered or maybe it's just the execution? Right. But we can self-assess where we're at and then we can focus on what the next action is. So starting at one and then, yeah, I love that. So some of this can make some of us feel uncomfortable. Good. (laughs) To which I reply, good. Because if you get to a certain stage, and whether it be at step one, step two, or step three, recognizing that you thought you were, whatever that is, but then realizing that you weren't, Mm -hmm. right? That can be a very vulnerable state for people to be in. But to work through that will result in significant and super positive change, but you kind of have to see it laid out on paper or to have the conversation or, um, you know, I love the word accountability because I, it's something that's kind of lacking in a lot of parts of society. Kind of. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But um, to be able to go through this exercise, and I'm sure you have clients that I mean, it's almost life-changing for them once they mm-hmm. come through it. And and regardless of how uncomfortable or kind of squidgy you might feel mm-hmm. as you go through it, the the impact are not only on you, but it's one of those things that would just continue to pay forward, yeah. right? Because when yeah. you go through this, it, it it's, I'm assuming, transformational, yeah. right? Um, but to be able to, to start on empowerment and not have the engaged piece taken care of, yes. like, it's a waste of time. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's great. So this is actually something that you, pro, you know, you work with your clients mm-hmm. with. Yeah. So uh, you've obviously seen some pretty big transformations that have happened. Through, and that's got to be a huge piece of why you do this, yeah. right? Because as you said, you want to make sure that first and foremost, everyone is is healthy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I and, love and, that. And again, I'm, I'm a byproduct of this. And so I think that's where when you get to taste the labor of your work and you get to taste the fruits of all that, it's pretty exciting. So I think to that idea where it's like, oh, I feel uncomfortable, totally, totally, totally get that, affirm that. Let's just pause for a moment and let's say we can totally do nothing about that and then see what that gets you in Mm. maybe five years, 10 years, Mm -hmm. 40 years. Or let's say, I'm going to dig into that. And what is that? Mm. And that must be good. Mm. There's got to be something I can learn. So totally your prerogative of what you want to do. Right. I love when people start to feel uncomfortable because that means we're actually getting somewhere. Right, right. The the real work is being done. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So let's actually talk about – so we're obviously working with the uh, Shandell Group um, is a great uh, resource. Um, What are some other uh, tools and resources that would be available to our listeners? Yeah, that's great. So I have a a couple of things within the organization. We have what we call the Leadership Lab where we'll take you, we'll meet you wherever you're at. So whether you're a high potential employee or an individual contributor to an executive, we run the gambit in terms of 
who we work with. And so uh, the Leadership Lab is a focused leadership development, healthy leadership development process that we have available. Uh, as well, we have a number of our research uh, firm in uh, that we work with uh, produces uh, behavioral and motivational uh, human sciences assessments. Mm. So uh, similar to Myers-Briggs or DISC or things like that, uh, the distinction with ours is that we've uh, this research firm, Target Training International, uh, we've partnered with them because they've really worked to go below the level of a personality assessment and get to the behaviors. And for me personally, in 2009, when I had this aha moment of, oh my gosh, I just want to be talked to in bullet points. And my wife wants to actually understand why. And we were just totally saying the same words, but had different intent and meaning. Oh, I get it. I need to change that, right? So uh, have those things, have a number of other things. I would say if, uh, and I think we'll have this in the show notes, but uh, folks can go over to shondellgroup.com. And um, for your listeners, I want to make these resources available. And if somebody were to reach out, and so I would just ask them to, to email me if they're in a hard space and they couldn't necessarily afford a uh, behavioral sciences assessment or afford going through the leadership lab, or maybe they want coaching and they talk to me. I, I've been there. I'm totally the byproduct of people helping me out at mm. the right time. Mm. And so I want to make that available to the listeners as well, uh, especially individual contributors who are just trying to make it happen. Sometimes we're just doing the best we can. And it feels <laughs> like we keep getting kicked in the shin. And then you look down, it's like, oh, it's my child kicking me in the shin. So I want to want to, uh, in the show notes, want to set you guys up. And yeah, the listeners up for absolutely. When. And I, I love that you referenced the show notes because um, we will have more information about Alan um, and the great work that's been great. down at Shandell Group uh, in those. So, oh, Alan, you and I, I could talk to you about this for days. And we, I might actually have to take you on that. I'm just going to schedule a full day for great. you one day so we can have a chat <laughs> about this. Because I... I can think of a laundry list of people that that are feeling exactly by the way you did it in 2009. Mm-hmm. And and what we really just want to achieve is the feeling that we are healthy and that we're moving forward. Yes. And then sometimes when we feel stuck, we really need to dig deep and, and understand, okay, yeah. let's take it back to, to us and then um, grow it out from there. My vision is we have a bunch of Ninas. Oh, we yes. We have a bunch of Stacys. Can right? I tell you how fabulous this world would be with a bunch of Ninas? Exactly. Oh, yes. Exactly. That's great. Okay, so... Let's actually get into the more lighter-hearted part of the segment Great. where we just ask – we peel back the curtain a little bit more on Alan, although I, I love the fact that you've just shared – you've really opened up about your journey, and I love that because there are people out there that are going to be listening and, I'm Alan. I'm Alan. I can mm-hmm. do this. Um, so that's great. But let's actually talk about what your first job was and what you learned from that that you still apply today. Totally. I was thinking maybe we could break the rules again. Oh, t- well – Gosh. All right. Yes. <laughs> so first job was building fences. Great. Right. Uh, let me share briefly what my hardest, I almost said worst job, but I learned the most from it. Mm. So after getting laid off, had the opportunity to go work with a startup that did uh, small service business, like handyman, lawn care, things mm. like that, franchising. And so got into that, Did I uh, was director of training and coaching, worked my way up, did great training and coaching, the the company acquired a small business and they needed somebody to be a champion of that and be president of that business. I'd proven myself and they said, Alan, we want you to be president of this business. Oh man, I'm, I'm finally making it. This business was a professional pooper scooper company <laughs> and I kid you not. And so I thought, okay, well, let's, let's look at it. It was a few million dollars, I think 50 locations across the U.S., uh, in Seattle, there was no pooper scooper. And so what I realized is I could, I had the moment of being either an armchair leader where I could sit back at the home office and say, okay, this is our direction, this is our vision, those things, or I could go start a local uh, pooper scooper route. And so I worked my normal week, Fridays ended work, and then that would be my night to go do pooper scooper. And so for about a year, just, yeah, maybe 16, 17 months, uh, had the opportunity to put what I was learning to practice. Mm. And it was the most humbling job. But I will tell you what, that's where I fell in love with audiobooks and podcasts. And that was one of the defining moments where it's like, oh, Charlie Tremendous Jones has this great quote. The difference between the person you'll be in five years and the person you are today is, number one, the people you spend time with, and number two, the books you read. 
And that was the catalyst that, that just over a year of doing that route and doing that job was really c- cementing for me, actually, oh, wait a minute, I practice what I preach. And who knew that it came with poop and scoop? It was the crappiest was- job I ever had. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Very humbling. <laughs> Well, I this was a first for the the poop and scoop uh, for the curriculum. Talk about humbling! <laughs> now the world knows. <clears throat> well, I love that you've you've got a, a wide variety, uh, a diverse uh, background, and I love that. Well, and I love the fact that you didn't shy away from that opportunity, right? I wanted You're like, to. I'm I really literally going to pick up the bag. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, uh, I wanted to, but it was it was very good. And, and the truth is, felt uncomfortable in that moment. Mm. I was like, you know what? Let's embrace it and let's get going. Do you have a dog? We do. <laughs> we do. Now I am very effective at home. I bet. <laughs> very effective. <laughs> I'm sure you got some efficiency to be able to. Uh, oh, goodness. Too. So, speaking of books, all right. So, what have you read, uh, listened to, or watched recently that you'd recommend? Breaking the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about End of Average. Great new book. I think it's really important for everybody to listen, uh, especially, or read it rather. Um, however, I want our listeners to feel equipped because I felt maybe like some of them feel. And so I have a, a dual book. If you're at the place where you don't have enough opportunity in life and you just feel like you keep getting passed over, you need to go get the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. If you cannot afford it, you can email me. Information's in the show notes. I will buy you the book. It is that important. Oh, wow. If you're the person who you're not leading as effectively as you should, and it feels like people aren't doing what you're asking them to do or whatever, you need to grab the book Leadership and Self-Deception. Mm. And both of those books, monumental in my life, Go Giver helped me realize that I actually i am more effective as I give. And that is part of the reason that I, I want to be, I just want to be the most helpful, connected mm. leadership coach in the world one day. We're going to start with Seattle. I'm going to start with my home and then Seattle, (laughs) right? But the idea is give and then leadership and self-deception really helps you understand how can I communicate and connect with people as people. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. So both books, you can't afford it. Email me and I will get those for you. So that's a part of your go-giver attitude, right? I love that. Alan, you are... You're a special human being. I love it. Okay, so we've talked about the Shondell Group. So what's the best way for listeners to contact you? Yeah, that's great. Uh, probably, so part of the reason I already referenced the show notes is Alan Anderson is misspelled all the time. <laughs> uh, so I'm on Twitter at Alan Anderson or uh, Shondell Group or LinkedIn or those things. Okay. But I would just say let's let's go show notes. Yep, let's go to the com and we'll have all the ways to get in contact with Alan. Great. So. This has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing the feedback from our listeners on how they are developing the leadership of themselves. Um, And I'm excited to continue the conversation with you as well, uh, because this is just really the tip of the iceberg. Um, And I think there's some phenomenal uh, insights that you can share with our listeners that that will be transformational for them. So let's engage, let's get empowered and let's go execute. I love it. Thank you so much, Alan. For our listeners, as Alan has said, Go into the show notes, get as much as you possibly can, reach out to Alan, and you can join us next time on thecareerq.com. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to head on over to thecareerq.com where you can get more information, show notes, and related articles to today's topic. Also, if you like what you're hearing, head on over to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and make sure you leave us a rating and a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks again. The Career Q podcast is produced by Lens Group Media and recorded at Jack Straw Cultural Center in the lovely Seattle, Washington. Oh my God, I want to get to the next level.